According to the Hadiths, the Christian ruler of Abyssinia protected the followers of Muhammad who escaped alleged persecution at the hands of the pagan Arabs. Also, according to the Hadiths, Muhammad met with the priest Bahira, who allegedly recognized him as a prophet. Furthermore, Muhammad was married to his first and wealthy wife, Khadija, who had a very Christian background. Why then does the Quran attack Christianity and the Christians? Muhammad's knowledge and understanding of Christianity was even more abysmal than that of his understanding of the Hebrew Bible, as we shall reveal. The words Christian and Christians appear 14 times in the Quran, in positive form three times, in negative form seven times, in neutral mode four times. As we explain in our series numbers 6a and 6b, regarding the two periods of alleged revelations of the Quran, as well as in number 18, regarding the cases of abrogating and abrogated verses, at the beginning of Muhammad's so-called revelations in Mecca, he was conciliatory and accommodating towards both Christians and Jews. His attitude changed when he went to Medina and was rejected by both the Christians and the Jews as a prophet and as a messenger of Allah. It was during this period that he started attacking both the Christians and the Jews with an avalanche of ignorant and ignoramus hate-mongering and war-mongering verses as well as with acts of terror against them. Muhammad in his Quran made it clear to his followers that he was the awaited for Messiah of the Jews and the Christians. Chapter 61, verse 6 And Jesus, the son of Miriam, said, Children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah sent to you, confirming that which was revealed before me in the Torah and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmed, the praised one. But when he came to them with clear signs, they said, this is sorcery. Not a single follower of Muhammad, past, present, or in the future, can point out such a prediction in the New Testament without perverting, contorting, and twisting language, religion, reality, and facts. Chapter 2, verse 116. They say, Allah has begotten a son. Muhammad's attacks on the Christians centered exclusively on the fact that Christians believe in the Trinity and that Jesus is the Son of God. This, according to Muhammad's monotheism, is shirk, meaning associating other gods with God, rendering such believers kuffar, subject to conversion to Muhammadan Islam or to death and destruction. No matter how sweet Muhammadan scholars try to sugarcoat these diametrically opposite beliefs, the bottom line is that Christianity is synonymous with paganism. Chapter 3, verse 56. As for those di disbelieving infidels, Jews, Christians, and pagans, I will punish them with a terrible agony in this world and the next. They have no one to help or save them. 361. If anyone disputes with you about Jesus being divine, flee them and pray that Allah will curse them. 369. It is the wish of the followers of the people of the book, Jews and Christians, to lead you astray. But they make none to go astray except themselves. But they perceive it not. Since the people of the book already had the original and uncorrupted revelations, Muhammad plagiarized, plundered, pirated, and or perverted version of their scriptures was and still is no match to theirs. That is why Muhammad's Quran rants incessantly about their disbelief. Of course, they were and still are in disbelief about the mendacity, perversity, and unholiness of Muhammad's Quran. Chapter 3, 118 O oh, you who believe, take not into your intimacy those outside your religion, pagans, Jews, and Christians. They will not fail to corrupt you. They only desire your ruin. Rank hatred has already appeared from their mouths. What their hearts conceal is far worse. This verse is one among hundreds that discriminate, incite hatred, and vilify all humans who do not believe as the Muhammadans do, in Allah and in Muhammad as his messenger. Chapter 4, 157 We killed the Messiah Jesus, but they killed him not, 
nor crucified him. For surely they killed him not. With this single verse, the Quran obliterates the whole of Christian religion, because if Jesus did not die on the cross, then there would have been no resurrection from the dead. Without death and resurrection, Jesus could not have been the Messiah, the Redeemer of humanity, and hence there can be no Christianity. Another obvious divinely revealed error in the above is the fact that the Jews never accepted that Jesus was their Messiah, and hence did not and could not have called him the Messiah Jesus. Chapter 5, 17 In blasphemy, kafara, indeed are those that say that Allah is Christ, the Son of Mary. 5, 18 The Jews and the Christians say, we are sons of Allah and his beloved. Muhammad's understanding of the words of the Bible, as repeatedly shown in his Quran, was utterly abysmal, to say the least. When the Bible mentions sonship, it is never meant as a biological one, but only that God, not Allah, is the father of all of his creation. 5.51 O ye who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians for your friends and protectors. They are but friends and protectors to each other. And he amongst you that turns to them for friendship is of them. The, the listeners should not require many more such vile verses to be convinced of the Quran's racism, hate-mongering, and discriminatory attributes. Incessantly, throughout its verses and chapters, as in this verse alone, there are several extremely important mistakes rendering its alleged origin as divine, null, and void. In this verse, as well as in all the other verses of the Quran, the mother of Jesus is called Miriam and not Mary. The title Messiah was given to Jesus by his much later followers from among the Greeks and the Romans, but not by the Jews. Furthermore, Messiah is Hebrew for the anointed, which is Christ in Greek. Neither Jesus nor his mother knew any God by the name of Allah, especially since the God of Israel and Jesus has no name. It is thus in summation impossible that the angel Gabriel who had 610 years earlier predicted the birth of Jesus as the redeemer of humanity could have revealed to Muhammad such lies, errors, inconsistencies and mendacities. All those abnormalities are easily explained when and if the listeners come to the only possible conclusion that all these verses emanated from the mind of Muhammad and never revealed by Allah or by any God.